Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In this video, we are going to learn how we can access value of selected row in table. That we are going to create a web pages where we will show the data in table and whatever row user will select that row of the data of that row will will display anywhere that you can see in the screenshot I added that this is the table where we are displaying the data whenever user will select any of the row the row details will be reflect in the above text box so that kind of things we are going to implement here so friend before going to a start I request you to if you have not subscribed this channel yet please subscribe this channel it's my humble request so let's begin to the visual builder application so friend you know that last time we created this web pages where we displayed the data for in this table from adp variable or like uh, and whenever user is going to click on that one we are displaying the message so wh what our next step is to we have we will add a few text box here and whenever user will select any of the row instead of giving this notification we want to show the value of that row here in this text box as per the screenshot i added here right so let me first add this three input box and then we will implement the logic and i will explain one by one what will be the logic behind that and how we can process so let's go to the visual builder application this is the application so here in the above we have to add that one right add the input text so before going to add input text i will go and i will select the layout so here i have form layout so i will drag this form layout above and inside the form layout what we have to do we have to add the input text this is our input text the so first input text i will add and you can see the value of the label of input text inside this box so how we can make it outside so select the form layout in the form layout only you can see the label edge will select and make it start so that edge will be come outside and here we have to add two different input text the first text will be for for example that will be the employee id and here we have to add another one and this will be for sorry this will be for first name and again we will add the third one and this third will be for the department right department id so now you can see we added this three but all these three we have to add in a single row only right single row so how we can do just we have to select the form layout that's why we added form layout and you can see the max column we will make at three so here you can see once we added the max layout three so all these three comes here in that one row only and now you can see we have additional space for removing that additional space we will select the form layout go to the properties and in the event in the all if you will go and serve the density something so you can see in the density just we have to go for compact so it will remove additional space from here right so now when i expand all the details all the above three comes in the single row only right you can see the single row here we all have three department so now what logic we have to add so whenever the data will be loaded in the table whenever user will click on any of the row that row data will reflect here in this one right so here this is the input box and for displaying the value in this input box we have to link variable to this input box right so as we know that we have three input box so we can create three separate variable or we can create one variable with three columns so whatever it's uh, like you want you can do so i will create one variable with three columns right so go to the variable and here i will create one variable and I will give the name as um, employee text var. And here I will select add a string. So instead of a string, we have to go for object so that we can add column in that variable. So variable name is employee text var. Click on create. So new variable is created. As we selected the variable type as object, so we have to add the column. So click on the field and here we will add the column. So first column will be employee ID, EMP ID, I will give name as EMP ID, create another, another will be that uh, first name, F name and the last will be DP ID, department ID, right. So now we created one variable with these three columns, right. 
so our next requirement is whenever user will click on the row right so when data will be loaded in this one so suppose i click here whenever user will click on the any of the row right that uh, details of that row should be reflect in this all three input box right so before that we have to load the data into that variable we created then we will link that variable we will link that variable with this input box right so what we can do go to the design again in the design here for this table we have one property that uh, we have one event that if you will go to the event for each and every table for selection row we have event as first selected row so once we will click here new action chain will be created and in that action chain we have to perform the operation in the action chain we have to perform the operation so as you know that like whenever user will click here click or user will select any row that action chain will be invoked and here we have to do the operation so what we want so as you know that whenever user is going to click on that one here we are getting some value that row data and row key and the row key is the id id of this table row key is the id of this table this one so let me show you in for example only so here i will go to the action chain this is the action chain here let me show the notification in the notification i can show you that one so that we can be sure about all these things i will give the name as test and what message i want to show i want to show the message at row key right save go to the page designer and run this page it will take a little bit of time to load the page and once the page will be loaded i will show you the value based on that value we will get the data from business object and store data into that variable that kind of things we are going to implement so here you can see page loaded so we have to load the data into the table i will click here in the load data how i implemented these things you can visit previous video where i explain the logic behind that and whenever user will click on any of the row you can see we added the trigger uh, notification as test and the value is displaying 2 this 2 is the id right this 2 is the id if i will click first row the one id is displaying if i will go for sixth row id 6 is displaying so now we know that whenever user will click on this row we will have value as the id here right so i i will delete this one and now what we have to do based on that id we have to get the data from business object right you can see that this table data we cannot access directly in the action chain as we have only id in the action chain right so how we can get the rest of the details so in the action chain if you will see here this is the table first action chain in this action chain what we will do we will call the endpoint call the rest endpoint and we know that for getting the data from business object we have endpoint for each and everything right so here i will select the endpoint so click on select what endpoint we have to get data from the business object that employee business object expand here and you can see we have to select only one row right one row for a specific employee details which row is selected user selected right so i will go for this one get get that bo employee id right so i will select this one and here we added the endpoint to invoke the a api rest api now we have to map the business object uh, that employee business object id and this employee id we know that we are getting from the action chain row data right so i will map here so once i will map here once this api this invoke this call will be invoked it will return the employee data employee details now that employee details we have to store in the variable which variable the variable we created here the custom variable right employee text var and all these three column we will update so how we can do just go to the action chain again this is the action chain and here we have to add the assign so that we can update the variable and here we have to select the variable so which one is our variable our variable is this one employee text var and in this employee text var we have three variable the three column that is department id employee id and f name so what i will do i will select one by one so first i will go for the employee id and here from where we will get the value for this employee id so we will get value from the response of this first endpoint right the call result rest business object get employee this one so just expand here if you will expand this one inside the body here you can see inside the body we have the department id and the here we have the employee id just double click here you will get that value added here save so now you can see we uh, we are able to update our variable with the column employee id coming from the 
the rest endpoint, right? But here you can see one thing we have single quotes, right? And this single quote it means that a string value, but this is not the string value. So go to the code, and in the code we will remove this column, right? So here once you will go to the design, you can see now that is removed. The same way we have to add for all these three columns, right? All the remaining two columns. So here we will. This is our assign action, and inside that we will go use another assign. We are already done with employee ID. Now here we have to go with another column that is f name, and from where we will get the value for f name? Oh, sorry, the first one is removed. Right? So Control Z. This one. So click here, and instead of doing changes here, I will go for second one. Right? So again, I will select this one, and after that we have to go for the f name. And what value we will get for f1? Click on this expression builder, expand this one, expand body, and here we have the f name, first name. Select this first name here. Now here we added these two, and now the third column we have to add. So again, go below, select the variable, and inside the variable, which column we have to focus? We have to focus that department ID. Select here. Now again, we have to go to the value, and what value it should be? It should be the response of rest call. So open the body. Inside the body, we have the department ID. So now we added all these things, right? But the problem you can see we have here single quotes, right? This single quotes it means a string, but this is not the string, right? So what we can do? We can just go go to the code, and we can remove this single quotes from here only, right? So now here we remove that single quotes. Go to the design, and now we are ready. So whenever user will select any row, this action chain will invoke. Inside the action chain, we are invoking the rest endpoint to get the data from business object for that specific employee ID. And once it will return the data, that same data we are in, we are assigning to that variable we created, right? We created the variable that employee tag, tag employee ID, the F name and department ID with the response of that rest call. So now this is done, and we have to assign this variable. To the input text box we added here, right? Input, right? So now what we can do for adding these things, we have to just select the input text box and go to the data. And what will be the source of this data? So just expand here, go to F, and here you can see this is our variable, right? Employee text var. Expand this one, and this is first one is the employee ID. This is the employee ID. Save. The same way we have to go for F name. Again, I will go for expression builder. Inside that, here we have f name. So remove this null value. Double click f name. It will automatically move value here. The same way we have the department ID. So go to the department ID data, and here inside this one we have the department ID. This one we have to remove this null value. Now save. So now our logic is done. So whenever this page will load, user will click on this load button. That data will be loaded into the table, and whenever user will select any of the row, action chain will invoke action chain of this table, table selected row. You can see the event; it will occur, and inside that we are invoking the rest call. Rest call will get parameters that employee ID. That employee ID we are getting from the getting as a parameters from the action chain. Action chain here you can see as a row key. We are passing here, and based on that, it is returning the data. In the same data we are storing in that variable, and in that page we added map this input text with that variable. So this is the in the page we created. So just it's time to run the page. So just click on the test. You can see page is loaded. Sometimes it's taking this time. Now you can see page is loaded, and now we have to load the data in this table. So load data. So once we will click on load data, data will be loaded to this table, and now you can see our input text is empty right now. So whenever we will click on any of the row, it will do the processing, and the value will be updated in this value in this input box. You can see it's taking bit time because of the network and so on of the instance. So here you can see we selected the second row. That's why the value of second row is one zero two is the employee ID. It's showing here. The first name is Suraj. It's showing here, and the department ID is one zero zero two. So department ID is again here. We have done some mistake. Department ID is showing as one zero zero two. That is the employee ID. So we have to do the debugging. So go to the application again. 
in the department ID, we have to check what is the data source. And here you can see what we mistake we have done. In the department ID, we selected the source as employee ID. That's the mistake we have done. So again, edit here. Remove this one, expand this one, and here we have the department ID. So now it's this time it's got correct. Again, run the page. This page is going to reload. Now you can see page is loaded. Again, I will click on load data button so that it will load data into the table. And now you can see the data is loaded in the table. Whatever row we will select, suppose we selected the row fifth row, so it will invoke the Action chain inside the action chain, we have done the operation and based on that, it's displaying the data. You can see now we have department ID as D03. This is the department D03. Even you can add for the email and all the details we can do. This is the simple integration we created. If you like this video and the way I am explaining, don't forget to subscribe this channel and put your comment. If you want to give contribution to, to our development team and want to help us, you can join membership. That's and give some contribution and again i will request don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you so much for watching again